the whole time before that, I was hanging out at the merch table because at this club I, that I was at, it was a very open place. You could hang out with the people that were at the merch table, and one of the people that were there was Dickie Bear. I'm over there just kind of kind of tripping out that he's there, right? So we're talking, da 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 da, and uh, he tells me he goes, "Yeah, that's my son's band," and I'm like, "What?" And he points up to the stage, and I turn around, and it's Sum 41. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he goes, the singer kid. That's my son. What's up, everybody? How you doing? Welcome back to the Punk Rock Review Podcast. It has been a couple of weeks. Sorry for the absence. We had a planned vacation. Then we had an unplanned power outage down here in Houston for about a week. So it has been a while, man. It's been a long while. Rob, how was your trip, my man? Oh, uh, it was it was great. I guess I'm like uh, I'm at the stage of my life where I travel to see bands, but like everyone who travels is also very old. So when I see mm-hmm. bands they play long sections of slow songs that everyone is really thankful for. Um, But it's, it's just cool to be like, like that's the part of the lifestyle um, that I'm at. So I'm talking about, of course, I went to Las Vegas to catch the, I believe it was the second show on the Blink-182 summer tour um, that is going on. That was at the T-Mobile arena. So the place, you know, where all the UFC events and, and, you know, like the spot right now in Las Vegas, it was cool to see a, a crappy punk rock band as they label themselves. Um, play in that arena along with uh, Pierce the Veil, um, who I wow. thought the whole this whole time was the um, the Black Veil Brides. I thought that was the opener. If, do you remember that band? That like MySpace era? Dude, uh, that's like a like a butt metal butt rock type band. Yeah, they look like it, but they they kind of have like an emo y sound. But that that's why anyway. Yeah. That's not who Pierce the Veil is. But the whole time on the way over, that's what I thought um, was the opener. Yeah, who's Pierce the Veil? They're they're just a regular like pop punk band from like the late the late twenties. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I yeah, had no so, idea. I thought it was like a metalcore band. So yeah, and, and they're the, um they came out and uh, and you know it was like good stuff or whatever. And I was like, oh cool. Well, I guess they grew up, or it's like Kiss taking off their makeup. And then I snapped that it was a different band. Um, <laughs> so that was interesting. They also came with uh, with this band called um, Hot Milk which was like Ugh. new metal pop punk was almost the way I could describe the, like, their sound. Um, and they, like that, uh, they had multiple singers. Uh, it, that was kind of cool. That sounds um, terrible. The, 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 the band and the, and the hot milk is great, especially on like, it was like the hottest <laughs> day in like Vegas history. So of course, you know, <laughs> hot milk is, uh, is something I, I, I gotta say though, and this is my second time seeing like the, a major pop punk show in Vegas. You forget that in Vegas, they know how to like do events. So like you, you go to right. events everywhere else in the country and they're like these unmitigated failures. But mm-hmm. then like you go to Vegas and you forget like that is the one thing they know how to do is events. So like um and the the venue too, you forget it's a it's a pro sports arena. So w- right. getting something to eat, it's not just like the hot dog and the chips uh from the thing at the front. It's like, "Oh no, you you can get like dinner in your uh Yep. in your seats uh that's awesome pretty, pretty penny uh but but, but oh, it yeah. was what it was uh but of course um i started off the trip before i really did anything to kind of uh baptize the trip i went back to the the, the mecca the punk rock museum uh this Hell time yeah, for I'm an unstructured tour and at the time of day i went it was like mid-afternoon so there was like two or three other people in the museum total so kind of had free reign of the place um for like a good 30 minutes of just walking around um taking the time to read all the placards you know what i mean because i wasn't nice. in a guided tour like like how it was when uh when you and i went didn't notice a ton of new things other than there was and i'll send you a photo of it and i don't recall if this was there or not but there was like a a matt skiba full like little exhibit like a little shelf where it had what? um yeah it looked like a, a helmet that he had painted like some of his art stuff um they had a, a copy of the uh of the halloween uh vinyl uh, the, you know, the, the really famous one, there was a copy of that. So there was like, and I'll send it to you. I, I took a photo specifically to send to you. Dude, please do. Yeah. The, that the, wasn't the, there last time. No, that wasn't. And, and, uh, and it just like, it, it even where, where it was didn't really go with the flow of the other stuff, like in the room around it, it was just kind of there. So, so I snapped uh. a photo of that. So I wonder if that, you know, Mike always talks about it, like, uh, changing. Um, also it was cool. Like with the slower pace, I just kind of hung out in Mike Ness's living room like actually like on the couch for a minute and started reading like some of the books that they have in the, in the faux living room. Wait, 
Is that what that is? Yeah. Well, see, yeah. So remember where there's um there's the no use for a name surfboard with like, yeah. the set list on it. That room how it's got like the movies playing in it and stuff, and it's got like yeah. books and stuff. I read it. That's actual stuff from like Mike Ness's living room that he just, like, gave to the yeah like stuff that he would watch like that's like a tv he used to watch like you know punk rock VHS i was wondering what that what like what the i just thought it's, it was like a cool setup it's like it's like everyone's grandma's furniture you know what i mean is yeah what, is what it kind of is which is like you know some guy from like the 70s that's probably what his apartment you know like um was like so yeah so i actually got to like find respite on that couch for a few minutes and that's and look amazing at the, look at the stuff i i still didn't have the balls because i haven't really picked up an instrument in about a year to play anything in the jam room like the dude was there and he was like uh hey if you want to play anything you want to plug in just just go ahead but i just didn't have any like songs oh, on dude. the tip of my fingers so i didn't want to sure like, just strummed, stupid. A, strummed a few things yeah i know i know i know and then uh what was cool after is uh you know we when we went it was a cool vibe because like that bar was flooded and it was it was full well i went and there was uh one person at the bar who knew the bartender <laughs> you know what was i mean Fletcher? Uh, uh, no but but the next person that walked in did order the fletcher but it was cool again huh? to to chat about the menu you know because my point of that is, is it was mid-afternoon so you're just kind of chatting with the bartender as she's doing like your inventory and and uh and that kind of stuff and uh and uh getting a few of the the frozen drinks which are just kind of fun and it's just uh uh it was it was a I, I i say this like i said last time i recommend doing both if you can preferably in the same trip but even in multiple trips like i did like if you're gonna go do a guided tour for like the um the fun of that oh, man. and then do yeah. the do like i did in the the self-guided to get like the museum side um um of it but but yeah the, the punk rock museum and it was like you know uh 55 or something like that bucks a ticket for the unguided tour like uh to totally worth it considering the price of everything else in the town like totally something that i'm glad is still good a couple months later right yeah i would i i i'm anticipating another trip out there probably solo mm. And it'll probably just be for a couple of days. I'll get a hotel. I'll go. I'll take a sleep. I'll get up. I'll do some gambling. I'll go to the museum. I'll fly home. Uh, maybe I'll try to catch a show out there or something, get a tattoo or something like that. But I am anticipating that probably in my near future. Yeah, I, I like that it's this little, like, stop off for, punk, for like, you know, a, a little punk rock journey you can go on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, on your trip i mean like these last two trips i get on i guess kind of had like punk rocky themes going to see you know like uh you know blink 182 in the festival as as part of the trip um but still it's like i can envision totally going to vegas for something completely non-concert related but i can you know spare 50 bucks in an hour um at the museum and it's, it feels like it feels like you're just doing something kind of cool and it's a little bit different pace than everything else in town right too, right know? right yeah it's 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 just a cool place man i mean people that hate on it i think they're going to be people that either it's either people that have never been and just don't understand it. But more often than that, I think it's going to be people that are going to hate on anything anyways. They're just that kind of person. Mm -hmm. If you're yeah. the kind of person that just always hating on stuff, you're going to hate on that place because that's just the type of person you are. But there's going to be a, a fair amount of people, I think, that are going to like appreciate it for what it is. Yeah, and like the person that I went with... Um she is like knowledgeable about punk rock generally but not like at a not like a podcast uh level of of knowledge or or anything okay. like that and there was a lot of stuff that like uh but she knew like who motorhead was and so when she saw the the nice. Lemmy section or um she had a, her her british friend she was sending her stuff of the clash that she was seen in there so i think i think there's more appeal to it than even like the probably narrow way that you and i or, or whoever else are kind of in this space um look right. at it. it's, it's a cool piece of like pop culture history um that exists in this touristy town and it's cool that like punk rock has its own very unique uh part of it and so, but still very punk rock like there's still a, very much a uh a, a punk rock feel it's very like, yeah. yeah but you're it's diy but it's also like you're not going to get your head kicked in there either like it's got the kind of no, the it's best diy the but it's but it's nice it it's clean mm -hmm. it's well ma uh, maintained at least uh, uh you know it's first couple of years so far it's, it's 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 well staffed well maintained but uh yeah, man, that's that's pretty awesome, dude. You know what I picked up? I went, I took my daughter to New Braunfels. New Braunfels? I can hardly say that word. New Braunfels. We went to Schlitterbahn. Do you know what that is? No, what is that? It's a, it's a water park. It's like the world's biggest water park. Oh. And uh, it's like three hours from here. And we had already bought tickets before this storm because it was a for a it was for a big group of us that were going. Mm -hmm. And so my wife was like, "No, go ahead and go, man. What's what's the point in you guys staying here and being miserable? Just just go." So we went out. And I took my daughter to go. We both got food poisoning on our trip, dude. It was oh, awful. No. Oh, it was the worst. But 
the next day I was able to get up and do some like record shopping in New Braunfels. And I met a cool dude at a place called Yard Sale Records. So shout out to Yard Sale Records. Uh, I found a Billy Bragg tape and a Lillington CD there. He gave them to me both, I think, for like ten bucks for the pair. Mm-hmm. And then I was at, and then I went to another place. I can't remember the name of it, but I found a 1979 U.S. press of the first Clash album, and I decided to go ahead and and purchase it and own my first Clash material since I was a kid. So, have you done any research on the like the value of that? Oh, uh, it's not any? expensive, expensive, but it's not cheap either. It's like yeah. it's closer to a hundred than it is not. Yeah, it seemed like some, one of those things that you had probably not super rare, but like guys like you and I probably would want a, want one of those. You know. Yeah, it's in good shape you would, too. You would like, like to have that. The jacket's in probably like VG, but the disc itself is VG plus. It's nice. Yeah, and I like the fact that you're sorry, I messed it with my light here. I like the fact that you're trying to uh, learn about the Clash, and then you're picking up some pretty like uh, level one kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, I'm not gonna front act like I'm somebody I'm not, dude. I've never been a fan of the band. Uh, Johnny Rio from the Street Dogs and the Defiant, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, stopped by my store or by my uh, theater the other day, and we chatted for like a good hour, hour and a half. We hung out for a while, and uh, I'm sure he was flabbergasted by my terrible taste in music. But I was talking to him about how I wasn't a fan of the Clash, and he literally mm. was like, "Well, you're wrong, but that's okay." And it was funny, bro. I was dying. I mean, he was just talking shit. We were, I was, dude, he was he had me giggling, bro, but. Shout out Johnny Rio, man. That guy's awesome. He's a very, very nice person, and he's a good dude. Uh, he's got like ties to Rancid, and obviously the Mighty Mighty Boston's being that he's you know in that band with Dickie Barrett. But uh, check this out. So, man, I wish I had it with me. It's at my store, I think. I have a small. Okay, so for all these years, I've been talking. I've been telling a story. I'm gonna tell the story now, and then I'm gonna tell you something funny about it. So back in like 2001. Vlogging Molly opened up for some 41 who was opening up for the mighty, mighty boss stones. Okay. First off, okay. put, put that, wrap that around your head, dude. Yeah. Like wrap your head around that. Some yeah. 41's opening for the boss stones. Vlogging Molly's opening for all of them. That's just, I mean, it, I think, yeah, it's just crazy. It, what a anyways, moment in time. What an odd moment in time that that specific yeah. order would, would be that way. Yeah. Right. So I went because a, a guy told me, he goes, hey, don't you like the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones? And I said, oh, I love them. And he goes, well, there's a band opening for them that you should check out. They're called Flog and Molly. I think mm-hmm. you might like them. I show up, and I've always told this story, dude. There was nobody there. It might have been 2000. It was a long time ago. It was mm-hmm. 2000, 2001. There was nobody in that at that show. And so... At that show, I had a sign that said, you know, something about bring me on stage because I'm bad in plaid or something, right? And I was wearing right. like this mismatched plaid suit. Dickie brings me on stage or somebody. I don't think it was Dickie. Somebody brought me up on stage. I danced around, sang some lyrics, jumped off, right? Yeah. yeah. But the whole time before that, I was hanging out at the merch table because at this club I, that I was at, it was a very open place. You can hang out with the people that were at the merch table. And one of the people that were there was Dickie Bear. I'm over there just kind of kind of tripping out that he's there, right? So we're talking, da, 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 da. And... Uh, he tells me, he goes, yeah, that's my son's band. And I'm like, what? And he points up to the stage and I turn around and it's some 41. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he goes, the singer kid, that's my son. And I was like, huh? And so that's not true, right? It's not his kid. Right, right. So for years and years and years, I've been telling people about that and nobody ever believes me because they're like, that's just weird, dude. Like, why would you tell random. you that? Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I don't know why he told me, but that's what he told me. And so when I'm talking to Johnny Rio, uh, oh, so, okay, to tie all this into, like, right now, a guy walks into my store, like, I don't know, a month ago, and he's like, Mm -hmm. hey, you buying merch? And I said, yeah, yeah. He has this Iron Maiden poster he rolls out. And I'm like, oh, I know a guy that would want this, dude. Shout out to my boy Bill uh, and Lonesome Frog Records. Shout out to Lonesome Frog Records. If you're down in Houston and you're looking for some classic rock or some metal, check out Lonesome Frog Records. Uh, I'm like, dude, my, my homie Bill would want this, dude. And so I pick it up, and I'm like, hey, what's that? And he's got, like, this other poster. He's like, oh, it's, it's kind of beat up. I don't think you'll be interested in it. I was like, oh, okay. He goes, yeah, it's just like the ska band. And I'm like, what ska band? I like ska. Is it like, you know, and he was like, oh, it's Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. And I was like, oh, cool. He unrolls it. Not only is it that tour, it's that show. It's at the oh, venue wow. that I was at. So... I'm talking to Johnny Rio and somehow Mighty Mighty Boston's come up because he's in a band with Dickie. And I tell him about that show and about that poster. And then I tell him that Dickie told me that uh, 
Derek was his kid. And Johnny goes, oh, yeah, he was telling everybody that on that tour. And I was like, wait, you know that he was telling me that? And he goes, yeah. And I was like, you can verify that he said that to people. It blew my mind because I always thought that it was just something he was pulling my leg and that I just sounded like a crazy person. Yeah. Turns out Mighty Mighty Boss Tones are the people that got Sum 41 signed to I don't know what to, to, to what degree, but yeah. they introduced them to the music industry, essentially. And they took them out on tour. And that's why he was saying that he was more or less saying you should pay attention to this kid's band. But all these years, I didn't know why he was saying that. I just thought it was cool that Johnny was able to verify that that did happen to me. He did say that to me. And uh, I have a poster now from that show. It's, uh, I don't know, man, what a cool world, dude. Punk rock yeah, is a great place, that's man. That's cool that I got re- recognized as one of his gags. You know what I mean? So right, it wasn't, right. It wasn't, it wasn't just some Mandela effect thing that was in your head. The, you've been telling everyone. I know Bro, exactly I'm the feeling you, that, you're, that you're saying yes, there. I thought, man, I might be going crazy right now. But uh, yeah, dude, uh, shout out to Johnny Rio, shout out to Dickie Barrett, some 41, man, shout out to some 41. Yeah, they got some a... pretty rad music. I'm, I'm not gonna even front, I'd rather listen to them than Blink 182. What a what a show for you specifically, too, of bands you like, of, of some 41, Boston's, and Floggy Molly. Like, that's, it's weird, right? It's a Randall it, special, right there. Yeah, it really is because all three of those bands are incredibly important to me. Yeah. I bought a hat that day from Flog and Molly, it was like a, a, a green hat shaped pretty much like this one. Mm-hmm. Except that it was it was fitted and on the back it had a shamrock. And my sweet, sweet, sweet dog that I love so much and miss so 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 much broke my heart and chewed that hat up. Oh. Like like years after I'd had it for years, dude. Oh. I came home and it was like chewed up and he was just laying next to it, like sleeping. And I was like, Oh, you furry little bastard. You're so lucky that you're the most you, cute dog in the world. Do you, uh, yeah, you still share that opinion about the dog after? I love that dog. I miss him so much, dude. Shout out Poncho, bro. That's my guy. Yeah, I, I had like him Poncho. for 18 years, bro. Oh. Yeah. That, but yeah, I had that yeah. dog from age 20 till age 38. And I had, I, I was homeless for like six months, nine months, something like that, because of that dog. Yeah. Not because of him, because I couldn't find a place I could afford that would let me have him. And I wasn't going to give him up. Yeah. So I, just, I mean, kids expire after like 18 years with us you know what i mean like we, we throw them out after that so that's that's pretty right great. but uh that was my uh, that, that, that dog was my uh was my life for a long time i miss him very dearly i'll start crying talking about him man uh well let's not cry let's talk about the the subject of today's video okay 2014 uh brings us a new tim armstrong like What's the word I want to use here? Um, what's the word? It's like, if Production. I put my name, sort of, yeah. Like, if you put your name on something, it's brought to you by Tim Armstrong, I guess. Mm. But we got a new project and a new group of people that he's friends with. We got the Interrupters. Ten years ago, ten years to, bro, I can't even talk right now. What is going on with me? <laughs> my apologies. This is what happens when we're out of practice, right? Yeah, so, no power. So, ten years ago. We got the Interrupters self-titled album. It was very clear that it was something that was associated with Tim Armstrong. It came out on Hellcat Records, and it sounded like rancid with a female vocalist in a way that the Distillers didn't. And I don't know, man. I think that that band is polarizing. I think that they're ultimately very talented and great musicians, and I just thought we should celebrate them for a few minutes, man. I, I... I don't know. Ten years is a big deal, and that album I didn't realize it was that old until recently. And I told you I said we gotta talk interrupters, bro. And this is a band that I think some people that are like ultra punk, quote unquote, might give a little crap about. But dude, like you can't, you can't, you can't claim that it's not quality music. I'm sorry, it's just not true. And music is so good. They're 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 so good, like. It's kind of bewildering, honestly, how good the band is. They, they, they really are. And to your first point about the the time that's gone by, that's wild because they always, maybe until the last album, um, and this is, isn't even a negative on them, they've always felt so new to me just by their whole construction. Like when I first found them, um, everything about this feels dated. But I remember hearing about them on like Facebook and thinking oh, really? they, yeah, and thinking they were like a band that Tim was in. 
is is what I thought. Right. Is, is that's kind of how they were like. So so it wasn't like it wasn't like they were pulling something over over people's eyes and stuff. It was them saying like, okay, this is it. This is the future. I just thought it was like a band um he was in or like you know like sometimes like the agro lights or those kind of things that he yeah like a with. side project or yeah something that, almost, that's kind of what know? just what i what i thought it was but again it still felt very modern and it felt like i didn't realize like the until i uh, dove into the band that the members themselves were um not like that new to like the scene necessarily and stuff like that they weren't this like well, the brothers of, for sure were yeah but... They, but they weren't like uh they weren't like 20 you know what I mean? Like, like kind of too, as they, they as they were being, it's not like how maybe you, you might take a band like, uh, like the bomb pops, um, who are like right. significantly younger than someone like fat Mike, who is sort of like the, uh, the, the, the grandpa that is presenting his, his, <laughs> his grandkids. And I don't, I don't mean that disparagingly. That's just the gap of, of age and time, um, that exists there where this more felt like something, um, that, that I thought, you know, that was new that, that maybe Tim was, um, was a part of. And then if you listen to their music and go through it, as you said, it's, it's very, very good. It's a band that we always talk about the discussions on their credibility and all that inevitably just comes up. Um, and I have a lot yeah. to, to, to say about that. We'll, we'll talk about that, um, in a little bit with that said, uh, musically that this band has always resonated with me quite a bit since the first time I heard them, um, part of their appeal to me was their nostalgia was like, oh, yeah. this sounds like stuff I listened to um, a long time ago. This sounds like the old Hellcat stuff, and it has obviously um, a lot of that uh, built in. And, and if you go through it, if you go through their music, a lot of it does um, have a relationship with Tim Armstrong's music, and he did write um, a major portion of that, and we'll discuss some of the implications of that. But it's also a band themselves. Like, I, I don't care about that. I care about it because I want to discuss it with you and the parameters of it, but the ultimate right. of, what, of whether I like this band or not is one that um i don't care about in like a passionate way of like um if you could tell me they're not cool they're not punk and all that i it's one that i would just concede immediately and be like oh okay so now let's talk about like all the songs on the album because i i really just genuinely like this as music um and i debate right. whether it's punk or not in my own head and that, that's why i addressed it in that sort of way because i do think about it because it definitely has such a relationship uh, to punk in a lot of ways, but I don't even know if it's always trying to be that or if it's, you know, uh, of how to discuss it. It's one of the more interesting bands, I think, to discuss in the modern day. The modern bands, you know, they, they can be good and they can have their qualities and stuff, but there's not a lot of, like, storylines always um, around them that connect to the olden times. And this is one of the bands yeah. that keeps us kind of connected to those olden times. I want to specifically talk about their first album for a few mm -hmm. minutes. Because that's the one that's celebrating 10 years right now, which is their self-titled record on Hellcat. Mm. Uh, the 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 so-called scene cred, I'm so sick of hearing about that because <laughs> and I'm saying that like because it's just it's I'm just so sick of it, man. I'm like who gives a crap? Yeah. Like, I've never thought about these guys as like a punk band personally, though. Excuse me, they've always been I've always considered them a ska band. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got a few punk songs, but it's basically like calling Rance a ska band. No, they're a punk band that has a few ska songs. Yeah, and I think this band I is like the this is like the this is like the mirror image of that. They're like a ska band that have a few punk songs. And I think they would define favorite. themselves as that as well. Like if you were to ask uh, all four members, like what their what their musical allegiance is, they're like a ska band that likes to exist in like a punk right. rock kind of setting. Is, is right. I think one hundred percent is, is where they well, the, they the, are. The, the, the Bovina twins, I think it's Bovina, right? Bovina, Bovina? yeah, Bovina. Bo Bovina, yeah, the, the the twins and the, the and the and Kevin, the, yeah, the, the brother. three brothers, man. They're 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 heavily, uh, what's the word? They're 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 involved with the Tim Time Bomb and friends stuff quite a bit. They tour with yeah. Rancid all the time. They they do keyboards for Rancid stuff. I see them in all kinds of their video footage. Yeah, and stuff. yeah. Kevin played guitar on some Transplants tours. Yeah, uh, yeah, bro. Like they've been around for a hot. Yeah, day. and that's what I—that's what I meant about them not really being like fresh so, well, that, in that way. But that lends credibility to those guys, in my opinion. So, like anybody's got a problem, they, I think they have only got a problem with Amy. And it's like, well, dude, she's a singer, but you don't have to be like a lifelong street punk to be a credible musician. Like, but yeah, she's and a it, great singer. It gets turned up obviously because she's a female. So right. it, it turns into this, and, and that, like when people say, like, I wonder why they talk about it. Well, let's just be honest with why people talk about it. So people, like, I understand, like, Courtney Love. There's a lot of allegations that Kurt straight up wrote those albums and she performed yeah. them. Now, she was also a scumbag person. So that kind yeah. of adds to that, or like a Yoko Ono or that, you know, that type of thing, or even Brody Armstrong. I mean, <laughs> it was it was heavily implied that Tim 
um, wrote it. So there's this sort of thing like, oh, the, the poor little lady can't do it and the man's got to write it for her. Whereas I think if we just think about it, well, also like um, Al Hefe does not come from punk rock, but he's like the, one of the great punk rock guitarists um, that we have. And there's a lot of singers specifically that do not come from punk rock that, that find this scene. And that's sort of the, the thing that they devote to G Greg Graffin. Um, yes, grew up in punk rock scenes, just like Amy of the interrupters, you know, like hung out with punk rockers, but his musical training came from like gospel music and really traditional well, music. So this is more common. It just, I think with, with like a woman, people are like, okay, so, oh, she didn't do it. She's just, oh, because she's cute or cause she looks like this or she affects that. That's why she has that. And there is a little bit of like, the, and it's not just Amy being a female, but just in general, like these are younger people. So they're a little bit fresher. So like people like my daughter uh, or like your kids can kind of gravitate towards them a little bit. Even my if daughter, kind loves, of, my daughter uh, loves the interrupters. Yeah. And my, and my, my daughter, not as much anymore because she doesn't like that type of music as much anymore, but that was the band that got her into music. Um, nice. and, and I think because they are just younger in general, like, like let's face it. Um, like Tim could get together with, and I, I don't, I don't know. He with with Joan, Tim and Joan Jett and Lars and Matt Freeman could probably do a badass band that would that would sound kind of similar. But yeah, I don't think that's like awesome. that's also not that's awesome. It's also like probably not resonating with our daughters. No, it's not at all. You know what like, I mean? That, that, in the same way that we would like. Yeah, and it doesn't imply that that Amy or the Interrupters are puppets in that way. They're just produced to affect. But like, it's also like. The, the analogy I always give is like, do you know how much of like the rancid sound that Brett Gerwitz is also very much responsible for and very much has wrapped up like in um, in what he does? And there's a reason why we value producers a lot because they, they do tend to shape sounds. And I think right. this is a this is a little bit different to that. And I kind of acknowledge it because I think um, it, it, Tim is more of a co-writer. Uh, within right, this right. at least at least with their earlier stuff if you notice more recently well that's what it, i was going to get into the, in a minute, the, so, the yeah. cocoon is hatched and their music is changing and it's something i think we we can discuss and i think it's i think it's more that like tim birthed this band of even though the people themselves weren't necessarily so, uber young but kind of under his way and they're sort of like they're in their cocoon and they've they're formed into their own they you. have their original identity now and they just happen to again still exist within punk oh. rock scenes with but they have their own identity in that in that way that's something like, okay, give me the floor for just a minute because it's going to take me a minute yeah, to get the thought out of my head. So, okay. On one hand, yes, they they came from this idea. They came from this, this, uh, this like, yeah, an idea. Let's start a band. It sounds kind of like this. These guys want to play in a band. They need a singer. I don't have time for that. Oh, Amy, you can sing. I love female-fronted bands. Let's get her to do it. That's kind of what it was. It wasn't mm -hmm. unorganic. It was just not quite four friends at a bar hanging out talking about starting a band but it was not that far off from that uh but more of an assembling of a team i would say is the right analogy. right yeah but they were already doing this stuff and then he, they cultivated this sound and it was like okay man you got a couple records out i'm gonna step away you guys keep writing music if you need some help i'll come in and do some vocals i'll come in and help write a little bit but you guys are now been with each other for six years write your own album next time see how it goes and then they're like all right so they write their they write uh uh What's the third record called? Uh, Fight the, the Good Fight or whatever. Fight the Good Fight, yeah. Yeah. And that one sounds a little bit different than their first uh -huh. two, which are very clearly heavily inspired by Rancid, uh -huh. if not more. And then their last album, uh, Into the Wild, which is a complete departure from the Rancid sound almost. Almost, yeah. not quite. But yeah, I think that they've kind of grown into their own sound. And they've embraced their love of like ska, reggae, two-tone dub stuff. And they've kind of got into the more rock and roll with some or reggae with some rock and roll influence almost and i think that should be celebrated not uh you know shit on personally but no but no and i i love the fact too that they've grown into their own thing i i, I think that is cool because if they would have done album, the same thing that would that would have got after a while parody would be would get boring when i say new album loosely it's like a year and a half old now i think newest yeah but before we even get into that i do want to just talk about specifically their self-titled album from 2014. Mm -hmm. So let's see here. Okay. So how did you hear, let, let me tell you how I heard the interrupters for the first time. Mm -hmm. The first time that I ever heard the interrupters, I was in my office at the very first apartment that my, my wife and I ever had together. My kids were little bitty babies and, uh, 
I don't even know if Charlie was even born yet, to be honest with you. She she might not have been. It was way back then. And I was doing something, but my wife was in the kitchen. And I, I very distinctly remember standing up. My TV was on. Excuse me for hitting my microphone. My TV was on. And then to my left was my door. And then to further left, like out the door. And then to the left was the kitchen. I can see the kitchen light on. TV's on. And I'm walking out of the room. And then a T-Mobile commercial comes on. And it's got that song. Was it Fight the Power? Yeah. 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 Take back the power. Take back the power comes on. And I literally stopped in my tracks. And I was like, dude, what is this? And I stepped back in there. I was like, wow, it's a T-Mobile commercial. That's weird. And so I just kept it pushing. The next day, I'm watching baseball. It comes on again. No, it might have been basketball. Whatever. I was watching TV, Mm -hmm. watching sports, right? It comes on again. At this point, I had the, the time and the wherewithal to go, hey, wait a minute. I need to figure out what this is. So I started Googling it. I might have even done the little thing where you can let it hear your music and tell you what mm-hmm. it is. The sh- oh, Shazam. Yeah. I run into the kitchen. I told my wife, I said, hey, there's this new song. It sounds like Rancid. I don't know nothing about it. And then come to find out, I'm like, I'm freaking out. I'm like, dude, it's this new band on Hellcat called The Interrupters. It's like a female fronted Rancid. It sounds just like them. It's crazy. And I mean, it sounded like the distillers. I was like, it sounds like mm-hmm. the distillers to me. But maybe a little slower tempo, but like the same sound. She th- that song specifically like a had Scott the raspy, Distillers. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, it didn't, that song doesn't have any sky in it, man. That song is a punk rock song, which is why I thought Distillers. And then I find out that they're a band on Hellcat. I go listen to their first album, and it blew my mind. It really did. I thought, man, how do I miss a band that's this good with, on this label with the people that I love this much? How do I miss this? And from that point on, I was a fan. My wife's very first show ever was a distill. Uh, excuse me, uh, interrupter show. Distillers were long gone. Uh, mm. Was an interrupter show with Starving Wolves and Rancid in Austin, Texas, bro. It was amazing. But I say all that to say that this album it it, it came out in August of 2014. So we're coming right we're coming right up on the 10 year anniversary. It's 13 songs in 35 minutes. It's a great song number and song length but as i'm looking at it every single song on the album is a good song this is like if you want to judge them on quality of music well their first album is a is a bona fide classic as far as i'm concerned the cover art is awesome it looks like a punk rock record it looks like a ska record it looks like a hellcat record it's got that high contrast black and white they threw some pink in there just to kind of give it a little bit of a different look so it's not just like a rancid album and i mean you got the uh the 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 the, the twins and then their other brother that are always hanging out with rancid doing things you got a, a tim armstrong guest appearance on the song family Bro, this album blew my mind. It is song for song as strong as anything that came out that year that I can think of. I honestly, man, this is a it's a classic, bro. I, I just wanted to give its flowers to it, man. It it deserves it. The band is fantastic. They have changed quite a bit, but they started off with a sound that I needed when it came out, man. It's mm-hmm. like when we weren't getting rancid albums, at least we were getting this. Yeah, and th- this album. Looking at these songs, I because I, I do lose track a little bit on these first. Like, so the, the first so- two albums are hard to decipher which what. Yeah, which I just what. I just forget the 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 last two have their sort of distinct t- sound. I, I don't know. I'm looking at it, and yeah, these are the these are the songs that are very much uh, imitation songs in, in that kind of way. I think you you can say um, there's a lot of these songs where she's affecting the Tim voice sound, not just the, like so. There's a lot of that like going on um on a on a lot of these songs but these are songs that are really well um written on their own and i'm looking at this and i forgot about the original track list i'm so used to um the extended version which has like double the amount of songs um Wait, which really? are yeah like if you look if you go on like spotify they, they have like the the deluxe version and i think the one i have on vinyl has a whole bunch of extra songs i have this Wait. is the one one band for whatever reason i have their complete discography i don't know how that happened i have it all too i have their live yeah. in tokyo which is pretty yeah. good too. i guess my i guess my kids being into it kind of helps you motivate you to buy the uh, wait a minute know. how many songs are supposed to be on this so like the 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 normal one ends at what like haven't seen the last of me right oh so there's two extra songs so okay okay so it's got the cover song and then uh it's got, treat it's got, the youth right yeah okay. the metro and it's just a okay, little bit so, so it was 11 songs not 13 yeah it's a little, but, it, but it does make uh, it a little okay. bit longer on on um on that one but yeah um, and I'll, I'll go through some of the songs that really uh, stand out to me. Take Back the Power, obviously, is the standout one. That's the one 
Um, I remember from the T-Mobile com commercial. I also remember listening to a podcast of people making fun of a Hillary Clinton documentary that came out in like 2019. <laughs> and this was the theme song of the documentary. And I guess like it's one of those things where it was like one of those um, – every episode of the documentary started with the song so you were sick of the of the song by the time you were done yeah uh that's watching it. so so that that was there um the other ones on there um that's like judge not that's a um, great I, song. I really like um family has a cool video the little animated video that that goes oh, along cool. with it um I, a few years ago for father's day i actually made a little uh like a, a youtube short like a internal for the family you know what i mean um that i put that song um to and then uh the the last couple of songs I really like. I love "Easy on You" from a lyrical standpoint and the way it's uh, it's kind of laid out. "A Friend Like Me" is one you talk about, like uh, songs you share with your kids and stuff. Like you know, yep. someday if I'm ever gonna dance with my daughter at her theoretical wedding, um, I think that one's a good one uh, to to put up there. And then "Haven't Seen the Last of Me" um, hits at the thing that this band does that rancid did well and i i don't i think it's part of their shared dna and the one the one reason why it couldn't have just been anyone is they create that sort of positive empathetic like uplifting sound that rancid does really well the interrupters also affect that in their music their music has that sort of it's got a little a lot of darkness in it but there's like the, there's always like that one or two positive and kind of uplifting even the song take back the power it's more one of those like sort of positive fight anthems and the, the interrupters Whoa. like it's kind of like a positive band and i think they they close with a lot of that that uplifting message on a lot of their albums, and this one, you know, kind of set the the template for it. Well, the reason that they sound so effortlessly like Rancid is because I believe that they're part of that family. Mm -hmm. I do sincerely believe that they are ingrained into that scene, that part of the country, those people, and that family. So they're in the studio. I don't think it took much for them to sound this way. I don't think it was hard. I don't think. I think they were like, hey, let's try this. Let's do this. And it just kind of naturally did that, especially when Tim is helping write songs. And and that's proven with their second half of their discography being so different. And it mm -hmm. still sounds quality, if not even better. You know, you get these these like Rancid-esque songs. That's great and all. But when they start breaking off into their own, honestly, the song, their songwriting has improved, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're not leaning on a crush of any kind. They're more comfortable in their own skin. They're more uh, confident. That they're going to go out there and just write a beautiful song and it's not like it has to fit in this mold you know right right and always i've always thought with them when they do more like social or political songs that's where i more hear tim like that sounds like tim's lyric writing in that right. like like the topics they they go on just cut that's where it now anytime they've ever done what feels like personal lyrics to me that's where like i can tell like tim probably had influence on how they crafted to phrase that or how they fit right. that in the pocket of that song but that that was their own unique voices that i've always felt like and that's always been something like tim couldn't like like some of the some of the songs like some of the relationship songs and that kind of thing it wouldn't tim couldn't produce that like tim no was, there's there's certain songs where physically it's very produced clear. that in in a way yeah that like people of both you know the different gender and of a different generation right can just well, kind that's... of produce that in a, in a different way and this is not uncommon in music like all the hit makers that are writing all the taylor swift and olivia rodrigo songs they're all like older than us you know what i mean and it's like they're kind of they kind of have that tune with people and that's where i think like like those guys like you said the brothers were already kind of on staff kind of at hellcat it, it seems like so they they knew right. kind of the deal there and i think Amy has that sort of like um, that singer spirit that Tim very much does, which isn't which isn't necessarily genre specific, which is why well, she can hang with all these like uh, uh, these these like ska people and these people who do like Jamaican music that come in. And there's like a lot of other artists. I don't know how many other punk artists you could have brought in and they would sort of blend in in that same sort of seamless way. So the the construction of this team, if Tim is like the general manager, was very good construction. Um, and and the choosing of the songs was was good. Like these these songs fit them very well. They didn't they didn't try to do songs that wouldn't have fit them. That that would have been bad. They right. uh, they got more original as they went on, as you said, because it stops like being so much transparently borrowed uh, from from Tim and more just influenced by. Well, ha have you heard any of her solo material? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's a great singer. Yeah, so yeah, I'm is. not surprised that she's able to do this. Uh, I think it takes more talent to even sing with like the scruffy gravelly vocals and then to be able to go back into singing with a clean vocal like it's this difficult and she, but... she does the 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 gruffy stuff really well like that's one of her strengths like right. that's the that's the other thing is like i can't also take like 
I don't know. Like I can't pull up. I can't pluck Nora Jones out of like you know the Grammys and say, okay, let's start a badass punk band. No, that like would it, be it, awesome it, though. <laughs> like Amy might not have been a street punk, but she she knew of punk. She was aware of punk, but she was definitely a rocker chick. She was a badass woman in right. that kind of way. Like she had the requisites that it takes to be a front woman, front man of a band. Like she has that, and most importantly, she has what the thing that people don't understand is you need charisma like i'm sorry you just you have you have do. to have charisma and this band is loaded with that the brothers have it kevin has it kevin is like the sort of uh the shot caller kind of like on stage and i think you know behind the scenes he's, he's sort of the 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 band leader and then amy has it um in in multiple ways she has it in in spades in both that she's um she's attractive and not just in like a, a dirty old man kind of way but she's like she's photogenic like she's yeah. She's like a star in that kind of way. Like she's gonna be an Very old, much. she's gonna be an old woman, and she will have that same sort of magnetism the way that like right. a, like a Bette Midler or whoever kind of right. uh, kind of does. At the same time, they appeal she appeals to to younger audiences um, and can hang with the bands you're gonna go see them with when they tour with the Dropkick Murphys or No Effects or any or any of those bands. They they also have the teeth to end the right. songs to to sound just fine next to next to all those bands so coming out right out of the gate here they were really just well-rounded um because because again like no no not everyone could do this like uh operation well, I no that, that's a that's tough standard to true, meet though. that's not a tough everybody standard to meet this. yeah like we talk about them all the time and what a great band they are so like obviously there's a tough standard that you are accused of approximating them in that way like that's actually they say you know imitation is the sincerest form of uh, flattery but this is actually like kind of an like they are an homage in a lot of ways to how great that music was is kind of how i i, I think you can also receive them or in interpret them well before we move on to like just their discography as a whole mm -hmm. i also want to point out just a handful of songs off this first album that really just kind of fit for me it's hard too because i honestly want to say just about every one of them man uh obviously take back the power it's the it's the mega hit off the record i mean that song was going to be a good song no matter you know where it was written or or when it was released or whatever that was going to be a big song because it's, it's just a great song objectively real quick um, shout out to whether it was epitaph or, or tim and hellcat for the distribution on that song for getting it on the at&t commercial the hillary well Clinton tim is Doc, like, they, good at that Tim has really connections all over the place, dude. That guy's got friends all over the place. But uh, that song was fantastic. Uh, Can't Be Trusted, Liberty. Uh, honestly, the whole record is really, really good. Uh, a Friend Like Me is probably one of my top songs on the on the album. But uh, I want to say this, and, and, and I'm going to have to just get mocked. Mm -hmm. When I first heard Metro, I thought, huh. They're covering Alkaline Trio. Oh. I, I, had, I had no prior knowledge to Alkaline Trio being the band that was covering another band. Yeah. I didn't know that until like, I don't know, four or five years ago, honestly. Okay, I, but Alkaline Trio perfected it. Okay, so you're you I, I would say so, yeah. You are you are but, forgiven on that one. But um, yeah, the whole album is fantastic, man. But but mm. it's a good energy, the too. Power, it really does. It sounds like a, a rancid album, if you're going to be honest about it, though. But think about the power of liberty and uh, family is a, I mean, dude, come on. This That's a fun song, family. dude. Family is a fun, fun song. And uh, and Friend Like Me, those are probably the best songs on the album for my playlists and I, my I, I, mixtapes. I will add, too, as we move on, is you talk about discovering them. I really was aware of them but really started deep diving at the start of the pandemic like the fun drunk start of the pandemic um where everyone was home and uh i like so much of their footage is just on youtube like li like full live shows it's just really oh, really yeah. well really well preserved for whatever reason um and and they were just dropping a lot of content like they had just got off a tour right at the start of 2020 so i think of so many like mid week nights with just like a 12 pack of beer sitting there uh, nice. and, again, and just watching the watching these shows and like learning the pattern and the cadence of the live shows and uh they bust out most of these songs live like before i got their albums i knew a lot of these songs just from uh from a lot of those live uh, performances so yeah. I, I i would foreground this too oh shoot i started playing it on the speaker over there um there is the uh the movie that now you can get on their youtube page at the time i paid 10 bucks uh to stream it i believe it's called this is my family 
and it's got the full huh. l- live performance of the you know the live uh vinyl that they have out the okay. the video of that which like at the time i paid 10 bucks me and my daughter watched it um and it was like it was during the pandemic so it was like one of those things where you paid 10 bucks for a something that would have been released like somewhere else you know to kind of rent it yeah um, that's but now I mean, now it's now it's on youtube them. Yeah, and it gives you a. I think it, you know it was that to kind of release, and it gives you a little bit of a biography on the band. So if you want to check that out, we're we're not really doing that. We're more breaking down the the songs here. But go go ahead and uh, check that out. Just get that kind of um, in there to be noted. Well, let's uh, let's see here. Okay, let's move on to like just talking about their best songs as a whole. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I I got it down to like a top twenty. I'm not gonna okay. talk about all twenty of them. I'm gonna I'm gonna do my top fifteen. I'm gonna tell you my top. I'm gonna tell you fifteen through eleven. Okay. And then and then we'll go into like their top ten, and we'll actually talk about those songs a little bit in a little bit more detail. But this is celebrating the band as a whole, celebrating ten years of the Interrupters, not just mm-hmm. their one album, which mm-hmm. I think is a little bit different than what we normally do. Normally right. we're just talking about a specific album and you know hard stop, but. What what kind of list did you put together? Was it just a uh, ten? Yeah, let me count it. Um, because I so I didn't finish making it, which meant I just didn't filter down the like I didn't make any cuts. Sure. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have a top 11, which is not really the, t- it was just the ones that as I was listening throughout the week, I just kind of hit on a different playlist. Like sure. flag. I fl- there's 11 songs that I flagged and I did listen through their entire discography being that we got our extended break here several times. Right. So, right. Um, yeah. I did too. Band that's why only I four got, albums. That's why, you that's can do that. With. So long. Yeah, it's hard. Because... It's harder with like no effects. You know what I mean? Where they've right. got like 15, like I'm not going to listen to the whole discography on one week of research, but we had, three weeks to listen to a band that's got four albums that I've listened to most of the time. And my family finds socially acceptable to have on like right. while I'm cooking dinner. So a lot of research. Yeah. So, okay. Let's see. S I L. What's that stand for? Oh, uh, no, wait, what, what are the albums called? It's a uh, self-titled it's say it loud. Say, wait, say no. Oh, that's what it is. Say it loud. Uh, fight the good fight, fight the good fight. And then mm-hmm. into the wild. Yeah. Is fight the good fight the third one? Fight the yeah, fight the good fight. Yeah, okay, the white, okay. The white okay. cover. I have the covers in my head more than the names. Right. Me too. Me the too. The blue so, album, the pink one. Yeah. Okay. So my number fifteen song is off of Say It Loud. It's Babylon. It's a. It's just such a Rip great. Bam. Yeah, great ska song. It's just a good song, man. Tim uh, Tim, Tim Timebong, very sounding song like that one. Yes. That sort of that sort of like yeah. Agri Light vibe. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, I'll make these top these this this five songs. I'll make it kind of quick. Number fourteen has Tim Time Bomb in it. It's Family off of their self titled album. It is mm-hmm. a, I think it's a classic ska punk song just in general. It's just a great song. It is so catchy. You can dance to it. My daughter loves it. It's a wonderful song. Off the same album at number thirteen, I have Friend Like Me. This mm-hmm. song started out much higher on my list, but they have honestly they legitimately got so many great songs. It's hard to categorize some of these as like where do they fit? Well, they're just really good musicians, and their albums are chock full of like really, really well made songs. Uh, it's it's interesting, and uh, I'll say out uh, right now. We'll maybe we'll elaborate on this a little later. Uh, I think that their early albums are a little more consistently good, but on their last album, the highs are a little higher, but they do have some valleys. Like they do have a couple yeah. of spots where I wasn't super into it. But the largely, songs that are, they're like really fucking good. I largely, the, largely agree um, with that yeah. sentiment. Yeah. So uh, number third, no, oh, I'm sorry. That was number 13. Number 12, I put off of the new album, newest album, Raised by Wolves. It is such Love a it. good song. And I also thought, is, are they talking about being raised by an outcome, the Wolves? Because they kind of were. No. I, no, know. No, no, no. I, I know. I know. I know. Oh. I'm just saying, but when I first heard it, and then I was like, oh, man, you could really definitely make a double entendre there. Like, you could make it mean more than one thing. Uh, but no, no, no. If you just read the lyrics, you'll know what it's talking about. Yeah. And number 11 I put off of uh, Into the Wild is In the Mirror. It's mm. got a good Ramones-esque hook. It's it's so good. It's that, that song is so good. I will say the only thing that I think bothers some people, not myself, I, I like the song a lot. Uh, is that it's a little too polished. I've heard that mm-hmm. about it a couple times, but I, I don't know, man. I love it. I love everything about that song. But that is my, uh, that is my, like, 
15 through 11. That's my ones that just didn't quite make the Outside cut. Outside the top, yeah. But are very, very close to being in the top 10. Uh, what was your number 11? Um, so I don't have mine ordered. Um, what? You had three weeks, man. Yeah, I know. I just, as I said, I just gathered them. Uh, do you want, let's, let's, okay. Let me go sequential then. Um, and I'll just give you like four. Um, so we'll go from the, the first album, the ones that stood out to me from the first okay. album, uh, friend like me, um, as we've talked about kind of like one of their like theme songs in a way, it, it feels like, right. it feels like that. And I, I, they actually don't, they, they sample like when they play other songs, they'll sample this uh, song in there and, um, <laughs> Jeez, sorry. Bless you, sir. That's what I get for not having my list ordered. <laughs> another one. And I have my thing away. I can't hit mute. Um, and then, as I said, the other one was Haven't Seen the Last of Me, um, was just the other one. I, I love the resilient tone that it has in there. Now, uh, the other ones I'll go to with on the second album, which the second album in my mind before this weekend is the one that raised in uh, my perception because in my opinion of the first three albums the second one was the was the one that i just always sort of tolerated um and it was the first album and the third album that i really loved and then i, I always held the fourth one just on a different plane but going okay. back through in the context of their whole career i thought like a lot of the songs i like are actually on the second album um so There's a lot the, of good music on that album the ones i'm gonna point out are and i don't know if this is on the second album because the cover is different but i believe jenny drinks is on that one and i just i love that one that might be on the okay. third album um you also have uh, by my side, which is really just well, kind of a. What do you like about Jenny Drinks? Uh, the the lyrical content, like the story, okay, out, like okay. that's that's a very rancidy thing. The way it's like telling a that's story true. of, of someone else, you know, um, and the that sort of like, and rancid has like a lot of stories of like you know this like woman on the run from like a domestic abuse or something like that. But I think it's yeah. it's really um, delivered. Uh, it just really, really interesting. I also have by my side, which again, it's, it fits like this thread of all these like brotherhood songs That's that they kind of have. Song, though. That's a yeah. Fantastic song. Um, but I like how they have their own, like for people like us who are not from Oakland and they talk about being bored in big uh, sky country and risking our lives playing with knives. That's more for like people from the yep. parts of the country that we are from, which they're from, you know, her being from Montana, that, that, uh, that sort of resonates. Um, the other one is the Valley. I always liked the valley as sort of a, a kick the do 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 the the little like freestyle part where she talks yeah. about the little scenarios um, where she gets it, again part of her personal story of actually coming over from uh, Montana and not really having a place to live in the valley, um, which again a, a song that felt very authentic. And the last one from that album, and then I'll, we'll go on with your list is um, maybe my most underrated song for them um, is the song "Good Things." Um, I will say like. Uh, what resonates with me with them is like pain and this is really weird but like the the way amy sings about like pain and trauma well, she just has, really yeah she's got some trauma that she's had to experience though so it's coming from a, a place of familiarity yeah and to me that's where um when I, I hear tim's voice and stuff and she can perform that stuff well and then i hear stuff that just clearly comes from her and like a song like yeah. this which it doesn't matter what you're going through everyone could just have a bad day you know Fact. what I mean? And so it's so so it's so it's very, very relatable. And this was the first sign of it. And then I think musically, the way it, the song sounds like everyone says music is therapy. The song to me sounds like a therapy session where she's just yelling, Good things, good things, good things are gonna come are bound to come my way. And like you thought like this whole theme of you you thought I was done and um you can't break me down. And I, she goes on that lyrical thing, she expands it. We'll talk about later on the later albums. But that was like the that to me is the first if you look at those first two albums, that was the first time when when you're really like the stuff that you saw in the later albums, like there's like a germ of it right there for me yep, that yep. really was about to blossom. So that's I didn't have an eleven through fifteen, but of the first two no, no. albums, those are the ones that really stand out to me. Cool. Uh, uh, that's that's perfect. I'll go through I'll go ten through six, then you go with some more years, and then I'll do my five through one. Is that okay? Yeah, that works. I'll do the Let's third do album it. and then we'll we'll end up on the last album for me. That's perfect. That'll do it. That'll work. That'll work. Okay, so number ten, I have uh Jailbird off of Into the Wild. It mm. is a fantastic song. I just put I love the song Jailbird. so much. And then I put <laughs> that, Oh, I love the driving beat of that song. <laughs> And the, well, I put on here that this album is incredibly underrated, and I stand behind that, man. I've heard a lot of people give that album crap. Dude, go listen to it objectively. Don't look at it through a punk rock lens. Don't look at it through a ska lens. Look at it through, okay, here's whatever, 10 or 12, 15 songs. Some, I don't know what, how many songs are on it, but like, mm -hmm. go, go listen to the, the songs and just listen to them one at a time. 
and tell me which ones are not good songs because I don't think you're going to have a very long list if a list at all. And Jailbird is one of the better songs on the record, in my opinion. And then I've got a uh, number nine, a, a song off of Say It Loud. It started off way higher on my list, but as 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 the list grew, it kind of ended up at the back end of it. But it's still a top ten song of theirs. Is uh, she got arrested, bro? Yeah. Come on, dude. Well, shooting down her man. I, another one I think it's kind of related to Je- to uh, Jenny Drinks. Yes, I, I kind of think yes. that's the same. I, I feel it's the same woman that's being sung about. I right. feel like I feel like Jenny's the one that got arrested, um, which again is another very like a rancidy kind of thing of these sort of threads. Oh yes, that, that you can Sounds that you can so feel. familiar. Good song. My, uh, my daughter, <laughs> my daughter song. loves that song too. Yeah, I was no, saying no, my, my got... daughter loves both. All, all of these songs, they tell tales that again tend to be from a female perspective. My daughter, right. they tend to resonate like with my daughter. You know. Well, I'm currently like outlining a woman in punk part one. And I'm going to be doing pre pre 2000, and then I'm going to be doing post 2000. So it'll be a two part series. Uh, that video series is likely going to a be polarizing, but b do gangbuster numbers. I yeah, think you know I'm going to put that. I'm going to put some work into that one. Man. I'm going to have ten women on each video that I highlight. It's going to be kind of crazy, man. Uh, number eight has. Uh, it's off of Fight the Good Fight, an album that, as the time goes by, that album gets better and better and better. That was Aging Like Wine, Not Milk. Um, got Each Other, featuring Rancid. And I just put, <laughs> yes, <laughs> this one. <laughs> Sounds like a Rancid song. So, of course, I like it. <laughs> oh, Matt. You know what? Uh, Matt Freeman is awesome in this song. <laughs> Yes. Uh, to the this. saving grace. We've been here for you know oh when, when the devil's brigade singer busts in on your on your right. pop song, like you know you're in a good spot. Facts, bro. It's such a good song. Uh it's just one of those things where like everybody says their piece and every piece is great. Yeah, and, and I, I live too, the different brothers, like uh the brother that right, plays right. bass will do Matt Freeman's part, which is kind of so cool. Dope. Yeah. I, I shout out to Matt Freeman, man. If you ever see this, Matt Freeman, I want you on my on my podcast, man. I'm gonna email mm. you at some point when I have the courage to get told no. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> dude, one of these days, man, I'm gonna make it happen, bro. Tell him nicely. Come on. Uh, number seven is off of "Say It Loud." It's the song called "Control." You know what song I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, bro. That album is so good. Off of, number six is off of, also off the uh, the same album. It's coincidentally the last song that you were speaking about good things uh it reminds me of a tame distiller song honestly it's it's a little slower than their than their stuff but it has that same like driving tempo and beat do, 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 yeah do, do, it's not do, do. it's not like a it doesn't have like the it's more of a you know what I'm saying so it's, it's got the, like a palm muted that minor chord urgency that's more of like a right. punk kind of thing right yeah, yeah. very yeah. much urgency is a great word for that yeah. but that's my that's my 10 through six. We got Jailbird, She Got Arrested, Got Each Other featuring Rancid, Control, and Good Things. Boy, my top five is just banger after banger after banger. I could literally put these top five songs on anytime and have a blast. So I'm excited to talk about them in a few minutes. Yeah, part of uh, the strength of this band um, is that they only have four albums, um, and but they're all... Again, they didn't. They also didn't form when they were 22, so there's nothing right. to be embarrassed of in their catalog. These are all very professional Bro, albums. Can you so imagine? They're all pretty good. If they put out a greatest hits album, it would be like 12 songs that are all amazing. Yeah, it well, wouldn't like, be like actual hits per se, because I don't know that they have songs outside of a handful that are hits. But if they put out like a collection of their best music. I could, I would be so excited to see what they picked out, man. Yeah, that's where if the closest I think we get to that is right now the the live album, but that pre that predates. You know what? That's a great point. That's a great point. That predates the final album though, too. Right. Let me. I'm gonna pull that up while you're talking. I'm listening to you still. Okay. So let me go through then. um, Fight the good fight, which is kind of where I I became more hyper aware um, of the band in more. Uh, real time would be more with uh, that album cycle. Like, like I said, I was aware of them before, but then when I really started um, diving in, and the songs I've got in there um, are "Be Gone," um, which I've always loved. Um, Amy and she does it on the, the new song, by the way, the newer album. Um, like when she does "Alien," she does the little um, "Hallelujah" uh, part. So like this sort of almost like this gospel kind of singer thing that she does. Right. And then Be Gone kind of has the ska, devil, be gone, devil, be gone. But it sort of sort of sounds like a chant so you that's would make that, man, in like church. Sorry. Well, dude, like I find it interesting that this doesn't happen to us often, but when it does, it's interesting, dude. We have completely different lists for the most part. Yeah. 
that gives you okay. I think when that happens, that is a testament to the strength of the band more the so music. than anything. Yeah, yeah. I think that that tells you how great the band is because if you can give us a band that has a bunch of albums and you and I can go through and pick out all of our favorite songs that we only overlap by 10% or less. That tells you that they got such good music that you can be subjectively completely different moods and both have awesome songs picked out. I, I don't know, man. I, I think that's a, 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 a very, very positive thing. A very, very much a, uh, uh, yeah, net positive. Um, yeah. And I, like, I'm looking at it. I, and there's, there's some, I, I left off of here that I realized that I will. Put we're, on there. we're talking about St. Loud or, or, or fight the good fight. Okay, fight, the, fight the good fight. So that's obviously, right, right, right. you know, you, you open with title holder, which isn't like a badass. Um, I so, love that song song, but, uh, uh, the closer on the album room with a view. It's such a sad song. Uh, obviously about, I don't know who it's about, but it's about the death of some friend. I don't know. But if you've ever lost anyone, it's just a perfectly resonant song. Um, it's interesting because the two that you've already talked about are the only two that I don't have marked on mine. That, that is, that is, that is interesting. Yeah. That, but, that but, is. It, but it, but it goes to tell people like this, how strong of a group of musicians this is because that's my whole point is that your songs that you really love aren't the same as mine. And typically if a band was like giving us like, let's say six out of 10 rated albums and not nine or 10 out of rated out of 10, we would probably have we, most of the same songs. We've be been teasing favorite. out the good stuff. Yeah. And, and right. I, I was stumbling over because I so I let me go back to one from the previous album that I okay. forgot that no, we no, no, by all means. put up there was on a turntable, which I feel like is oh, we'll there. We'll talk about that one in a second. Yeah, buddy. I that's like that. that's like their roots radical. That's their radio. That's their like mission statement of a song yes. of like why do we like what we like? It's it's that same exact song trope. Well, like and they take they back just the do it so was well. Intro, and then on the turntable was like their. It's like let's go and knock on the wolves. It's like. Yeah, bro. Yeah, it's we're your, about to talk about that one. It's your mission statement. So if the, those, and I like I that 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 list is really hard to make because, as you said, it's like there's nothing I would really take off. Like Very I, I don't know. Fat to trim on these records. Um, man. maybe uh, there was the maybe that one song, Media Sensation or Media something like that. one of that one. I song love that, that song. It's the I always think of it as their weakest song, like in their oh, whole no, discography. Not- Oh wow, that's not even close to their weakest. But song again, but but I mean, I don't know what I, like it's like because well, I have to pick something. Not, it's not there's not, there's not, of, there's not there's much. Not a lot of fat to trim, man. There's, there's not like, there's not like a they they've done nothing that I'm like. What were you thinking? There's not a single thing in there that I have that feeling on. Right. Well, when they come out with you know subtitle 2000, we'll have to talk, sit down and talk about it. Yeah, I can't wait till they go through a midlife crisis and want to make a hardcore record. That's gonna be awesome. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. All right. Are you still have anything you want to talk about with this album? Or you no, done? no. Move, move okay. on to your okay. top, and then we'll, I'll talk about the last yeah. album. I'll give you my, my top five uh, interrupter songs right here. Let's see here. Hold on. My, my apologies. Let me. Let me. Okay. Uh, why did I mess this up? I'm so right. sorry. Well, we were so well produced that we have different style lists, so we are we are. Great. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's how we do it here at the <laughs> Punk Rock Review Podcast. All right. The top five interrupter songs. Number five off of Fight the Good Fight is Title Holder. I love that song. The gang vocals, the mix on that album is absolutely insane, bro. The mix on Fight the Good Fight is bananas, bro. It sounds so good. Like, just sonically speaking, like, I turned it up incredibly loud on my in, in my house on my stereo. And I was like, oh, I, I didn't know it sounded this good. Like, I knew the songs were good, but I didn't know it sounded that good. And when you have a song that's sa- that, that's written this well, it sounds that good. It's hard to not put it in your top five. Mm-hmm. Uh, off their self-titled first album, you have Liberty. I don't know, bro. That is a gang vocal circle pit type of song. And man, uh, it's just it's just got this. Remember we remember we talked about our contrast. Yeah, you don't like that song. That's the that's the other one I kind of think of. Like, oh, that one's okay, but like, oh, that's like a top five for me, man. Yeah, great song. But now, now, now we're the top three songs. There is no way to argue this. It there, it's just not. It's not. You can't do it. It's take back the power at number three. It's the one that introduced them to the world. Uh, off of. Fight the Good Fight, their second best song is so easily kerosene. It's not even a, it's hard. Bro, how do you, like, that song is so catchy. It's like, you're like, oh, I didn't want to hear that today. That's all I'm going to think about. Damn it, bro. It's a, It just gets stuck in your head. But we already discussed their best song is on a turntable off of 
uh, sing it loud. It is. Yeah. It is such. It is definitely a Roots Radicals song, and you have like Concur. right here Concur. represent. Yeah, represented in their top three, you have that rancid representation. You have the Let's Go style song with Take Back the Power. You have the Time Bomb with Kerosene. You have Roots Radicals with On a Turntable, dude. Tim Armstrong is a fucking genius, man. I don't care what anybody has to say, and these guys deserve a lot of credit for being able to say yes please help us with this we want to work with you and we want to go where you're guiding us then when we get there let us go we'll go do our own thing because look man those may be their best three songs right now but I, you couldn't convince me that they have the potential that they don't have the potential to now go out and write a fifth album that is just mind-blowing it wouldn't shock me at all it, it wouldn't blow my it wouldn't blow my mind it would i would be like yeah duh like, have you seen them play live? I fucking have. They're amazing. I've seen them play quite a bit more than I would have thought. I would love to see them play live again. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, man, those are my top five songs by them, and I, I would, I would love. I mean, I guess, I guess, Liberty is a super subjective pick. It's just one that I really, really like. But title holder. Let's see. If, if I was gonna switch one out, it's a, without, it's a good if, list. If I was gonna switch one out with Liberty, let's see. What would I pick out? I might have to go with. Thank you. I, I I worked hard on the list, man. I, I might go. Damn, I don't know, dude. Um, I mean, why why take anything out? I mean, yeah, list. I think I think Liberty just stays where it's at for me. Yeah. Um, I I really I really love that song quite a bit. That's a great list, man. I I think and I do think that there's a little bit of room for four and five to be messed with a little bit because I think that's where your subjective songs get put in. But the top three, it's hard to argue with those three, man. It yeah. really is. And, and the well, best part, what's the best part about those top three songs though? What's that? I didn't even do it intentionally. Each one is from a different album, bro. Oh, yeah. So like with Rancid, it's really hard to not put the top five songs all off of Outcome the Wolves. Mm -hmm. Dude, it was really easy to pick one off of all three albums because each album had a song that was so good that it stood out amongst a crop of amazing songs. Uh, Yeah, I, I, I agree with uh, pretty much everything. Most of it. That, that you said there and, uh, and your list. Um. Thank going you. into the the final album uh, that we're going to talk about, as I call it, the Blue Album, which what's the name of the actual album is Into the Wild. Into the Wild. Okay. Um, so th this one was interesting for me because I was pretty hyped when it came out because I was pretty big fan of the band just at that during that time period and my, my right, kids right, were into right. it, so it was just like kind of all in. And I remember early on, it was one of the first things I ever tried to do on the internet. I tried doing like a Twitch stream where I listened to the album in full, like the no day kidding, it came huh? out and stuff. That's yeah. Awesome. And um, I had read all the the media that they did, that with the type of album it was going to be, this and that. And I remember hearing the album the first night, thinking the album was of great quality, but never picking the album really up again till last summer. Uh, and and for whatever reason, I just started listening to that album. It just kind of came up, and I was like, let me just sort of check out those songs. And I think maybe they were just coming. They were kind of coming up when I was listening to the new rancid album. So I think I just had more of the rancid Hellcat stuff just kind of in the algorithm um, right. on the mind. Um, so I started going through that album and as, as we are today with that album being about two years old, I believe at this point, it is the album that right now I go to all the time when I go to the interrupters. I absolutely really, really love that album. That album would be the closest thing I would do of marking off top songs now it is completely different than like i think the rest of their catalog the rest of their catalog is more representative of music i'd like so like if yes. you wanted to get my attention i think the first three like if if you wanted to appeal to me to catch my attention which they did um you would get me on those first three albums i would probably not like the, necessarily have given a band that came out like this with this in this presentation i probably just wouldn't have given it as much of a chance it wouldn't have seemed like necessarily it was for me so it's not like i would have actively disliked it i just probably would have never found it had i not had that root relationship kind of built up with it and initially i didn't nice. really get it i respected it but i didn't get it now over the last couple of years um i have just really fallen into this album and i'll put put uh, point out a couple of songs that i highlighted um, okay. But I, I, I do pretty much like everything. Uh, I don't always love listening to it from beginning to end uh, just because some of the songs That's a can, good point. can get a little... I don't know what it is about it. Maybe because it's not it's not a very... It, like, there's a lot of upbeat songs, but it's not 
quite the high energy of the other albums and some of the, like the there's some stuff that they experiment with that i think they do very well but just doesn't necessarily always fit the flow of the of the album of the, of the afternoon man sometimes your day is a little different than that i totally yeah, get that and i agree yeah. with that wholeheartedly continue because yeah. i have i have something i want to talk about very specific okay. and i want to get your feedback on it and then so, we'll wrap up so the 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 few as you said raised by wolves and yeah. uh, and in the mirror um, are very good. Again, lyrically, this one I just think because she wrote it during the pandemic, a very personal album. It's very individual. Right. Um, but the other one is, and I, I I hope you like this song was the hard way, because if if there's oh. ever like a thing about I learned everything the hard way, and at the end, oh yeah, that's the a end, great song. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I never, I don't ever listen. And sometimes I never will. It's just like, if, what a cool, the way she, she rephrase, she phrases Very good that. Song. Very and good then, song. um, there's the song worse for me, um, which okay. again, no, yeah. no, nah, nah, you only want what was, what was worse for me, which I, I, I right. believe was about a, an abusive partner that she had. And then the other one, which I didn't add, so I got about like 14, but the other one was, um, and I love this one was let him go. Um, which has okay. it's more, it's more, uh, the lyrics are kind of dark, but it's more upbeat in sky. You know, if it, it, the, yeah. and the line that she throws in at the end, if they don't ever want your light to so shine so bright and all that and again, kind of like what I would ne nor normally consider corny lyrics too as yeah. well. You know what I mean? Cause like this uplifting song, like people don't believe in you, you know, or they're going to hold you back. And it's like, whatever do I really, is that lyrics that I really, you know, me almost 40 years old that I'm going to resonate with. But I hear every word of that song and every word of that resonates to me. That's it's just, wild. It's, it's so crazy in that way yeah and so it's just, those are the ones those, i don't know if those are my favorite from that album but those are the ones that really have stuck out to me and, and like for a, a solid year that album and I, I don't consider myself in a phase where i'm listening to the interrupters right now because okay. when i think of the interrupters i think of take back the power i think of that kind of like i'm not watching the live play, even though they, they have some recent one that's got up that i've, I've watched in preparation for this so they're not yeah. really top of mind but that first that blue album for whatever reason just has stuck with me for about a year interesting yeah. i think it's so wild that we have such different lists of songs that's that's i think it's kind of awesome actually mm -hmm. um okay before we wrap this up yeah i have a theory okay. that i want to run by you shoot let's see hold on one second i'm looking to see okay I'm trying to figure out what we're going to talk about next week i don't really have a i have some ideas deck. oh awesome i would love to have a little bit of help this week with that um all right, let's see where's it at. Here we go. Okay, so this is my interrupters' theory on their discography, man. Okay, I want to I, hear this. I think that the, the interrupters have, to a T, mirrored Rancid's discography. I don't know if it was intentional or not. But look at it from a little bit of a distance. You have okay. the self-titled album. Rancid had a self-titled album. Mm -hmm. It's also their fastest album. It's also their most raw. Okay. Then mm -hmm. you have their second album where they kind of come into their own. You have Let's Go. And then you have uh, Say It Loud, which has also the similar feel, a little bit better production, a little bit more. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm following now. Okay. Yeah. A little bit of fluidity. All right. Okay. Yeah. Then you have probably their biggest album. You have Fight the Good Fight and mm -hmm. Out Come the Wolves is definitely Rance's biggest it's album. It's slick. Right? It's slick yeah. too in the, in the way that Fight like... Fight the Good Fight is up to this point their best production. It's got their most uh, well-worked songs. It's got the most anthemic songs. It's got the stuff that you remember when you think of the Interrupters. Out Come the mm -hmm. Wolves is the same way for Rance. Then you have the one that everybody shits on because they don't really get it. Into the Wild and Life Won't Life Wait. Won't it's wait. their most experimental album. It's got the most broad, uh, um, you know, sounds Appeal. that you can yeah. get. Dude, they mirrored them. I don't think it was intentional at all, but I think it's very uh, interesting. It's a, it's a, it's a neat so, coincidence to talk about. But dude, it feels like a life cycle. It, that's just yeah. very similar. Yeah, I, and even, there's it, even guest ska vocalists on the fourth album. Like, right, yeah, you're bringing dude, in. I'm telling you, man, non, you got, non punks to to do dude, parts. I'm telling you. Yeah, and and their fourth album is so much more rooted in ska and reggae than their previous records, which are it, all ska punk records. But ska the, punk, like, yeah. But their, but their fourth record has a lot of just outright ska and and old soul and R and B influences, which so did Life Won't Wait. Uh, it's just so interesting. When I was looking at them today, I was like, I was like writing some notes down, and it just blew my mind because I was like, wait a minute, I can't believe this is happening. And it's exactly the same. And they're like all two years apart, which is a little different from Rancid, but not much. 
Well, that yeah, different. We're talking about 10 years, four albums is, is quite a bit, especially with modern albums. Well, they, Rancid, 93, 94, 95, 98. Yeah. Yeah, no, it well, is. They have 14, 16, 18, 22. To, to, to bolster your point, when we were talking earlier and, and I was going down through my albums in order and I was thinking, the exact thing I was thinking of is fight the good fights like their fun pop record. And I was thinking their masterpiece is Into the Wild, which talking about Rancid's career, their fun pop record would be Out Come the Wolves and their masterpiece would Bro, I don't understand life, the fun oh, pop record thing, but yeah, the Ran- Out Come the Wolves is their fucking awesome street punk record. I don't understand the pop thing. I don't understand that reference when people talk about Rancid, but I know they have some pop sensibilities, especially in their later albums. I don't really consider anything on Out Come the Wolves poppy, though, personally. No. Maybe time bomb, but it's more of a ska song. But even Ru- no, but Ru- but Ruby Soho is at least catalog- cataloged like in our consciousness as like a pop punk song. So wait, who's not mine? Okay, yours. But I'm saying like, Look, I'm, dude, you're like the only person I ever hear refer to Rance as like a pop punk band. It's weird. Okay, man. they they didn't break in '94 with all the other pop punk bands. Cool, but right. No, it's um, just, I'm not even arguing whether or not you're right or wrong. I'm just making a point that you I don't hear that often. It, it, okay, like, but either way, it's their slick album, right? We're not yeah, no yeah, arguing no, that no, Alcondo no. is not their slick album. It's, no, no, my, for sure. Was I just, my I main just, point of their of their slip slick well, you pop know, dude, album? Was we're the, I'm a fucking curmudgeon old punk rock guy. The word yeah. pop makes yeah, me go yeah, ah, yeah, ah. new nuance mongering over here. I'm a fucking idiot, dude. It's all cement. No, matter. a good theory though. I like the. Isn't that weird though? I like guess yeah. when I when I realized that I was like, that is interesting. And that I think really I think like age age wise, they're like ten years behind where Rancid is at each point, like in their life. Too. Right. That's so so crazy, it's just dude. so so, but like ten years. No, they're Rancid, twenty years behind. Yeah, that's what I mean. So like, I think like like they're twenty years. They're, behind, they're, they're about they're shit. about like in their hitting their forties now, where it's like Rancid would hit their thirties when they did Life on Weight. So they got a little about a ten year difference on that. Oh yeah, in their life they're a little bit different, but they're, of that but part their, of the their catalog is twenty years apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, which, which that's wild. Which again, as I always say, like I always catalog Rancid as like they uh, Tim is the same age as my mom, I believe. So okay. I always I so like I guess. Like and the interrupters are about my age, so it's it's about like a parent kid kind of Damn, distance. Dude. Tim Armstrong's not a young man. No, no, no. Uh, dude, hey, if I if I'm doing this, uh, females in like women in punk stuff. Yeah. Question for you: Do you sure. think that Laura Jane Grace needs to be mentioned? Because I I have I have had this like feeling that if I don't mention Laura Jane Grace, I'm being a big piece of shit. Because I feel like if nothing else, that is a incredibly important person for women in punk no yeah i i would i would yeah. think you would have to i think it would carve out like if you're gonna if you're gonna bring up bring her up i think you should just carve out a space though for that because i think there's yeah. um I, I i don't think even though it may be the more respectful thing to just me- if you were just going to mention her um uh, that really wouldn't tell the story and and also really wouldn't uh her impact would actually kind of get minimized i think by not by not maybe i should just do a separate video maybe i should like mention her towards the end of the first part because i think she would kind of fit in with well, and both. i think narrative then, wise like her story really resonates with you specifically so i think you have a lot to say about that specifically. right yeah right? like as maybe, maybe i should show. maybe i should just do a whole video on her i i fear that i might upset people that i sh- should that shouldn't be upset with me though and i, I don't want to have to argue people in the comments because i'm very active in my community Mm, but like a good companion piece might be the way to go. Some the, fucking idiot in the comments said that because I used the name Tom Gable, that that was dead naming and that's disrespectful. And I'm like, dude, there are parts of history where you're going to have to use those two words next to each other. Like you can't give her story without that. I'm yeah, sorry. It'd be, it'd be more if you called, called her that now, like right now. It'd, that be, would be, it'd be weird if I was like referring to her as that, do, but I'm like, like speaking of when, yeah, I'm like speaking of when like I met her at this point in my life, and then I was talking to her. But when I was talking to her, it wasn't like I was talking to Laura Jane Grace at that point in my life. I was talking to someone else. Laura Jane Grace hadn't been uh, given to the world yet, and it, you know she was there. I just didn't know it. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's so crazy. These people get so fucking in their feelings about shit. They just want to be mad about something. They want to. Virtual signaling hasn't died yet, man. What the fuck are we doing? Yeah, I I feel like you uh and you it's funny because they're gonna see this like uh tatted up Texan on there and they're gonna right. think you're you're gonna have one take about things and it's actually a completely different one. So Dude, I, I'm I think, incredibly respectful to, about that and I am very I know and I think that that's kind of cool that you if you made your own standout video, it would be very like it would mess I think it would mess with people's expectations. You would you would get certain flack from it, but you're also on this 
topic, I think you would know how to defend yourself pretty well. Yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm not really. I'm just worried about time being wasted doing it. <laughs> yeah, like, it's so dumb because I'm so. If, not, if nothing else, I'm like a super fan of that woman. So yeah, uh, I, 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 think, I think I think that just deserves maybe its own story a little bit, and then maybe. I think you might be right. I might mention yeah. her like as like a at the end of the first episode, like hey and. This person needs to be mentioned, but I want to go into more detail. But here's what they've kind of done as far as music. Uh, and in a separate episode, I'm going to do like a 20 minute piece on just this person. So if you want to learn more about Laura Jane Grace, tune in then, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I think I think that would be appropriate. Cool, man. Hells yeah. So what are your ideas for next week, sir? Well, being that I, this by the next time I talk to you, I will have uh, experienced two days of no effects retiring and a whole lot of other bands. I figure we could focus on something based on one of those other bands that I'm going to see in the next, because I'll be doing a lot of research of by just listening to those bands and getting fired up. Um, what bands are they? So we we can work with No Effects, MXPX, Face to Face, Suicidal Tendencies. Um, let's see. I don't like uh, Suicidal and I don't like Face to Face. I will listen to one of those bands if you want to. Let me, uh, let me actually, you know what? I love MXPX and I think we should maybe talk okay. about the best it's, MXPX it's songs. summer. It feels like MXPX season. I mean, it kind of does. So we wanna, do we want to do best, like the, the best of their career, like the stuff we like the most from their career? Let's, or? let's, let's do that. Let, let's okay. do a week of listening to MXPX, MXPX and then appreciation and stuff. Yeah. And be then cool. like, uh, let's see here. I'll do a little research and I'll have like a little history lesson ready to go because I'm sure you'll have some information. Yeah, um, yeah. But the first one of the first albums I ever bought that was punk was MXPX. So I think that would be a cool topic to talk about personally. And I think I think that there's a band with a huge catalog that if we have like a top ten list or something like that, um, we would have. It a, might a, be very different. Yeah, very different. Yeah, even though today was a small catalog that was very different, that's going to be a big catalog so, that might be very different. So I, that's going to be fun. I, and I, and it's like vacation prep and uh podcast prep at the same man i i feel bad not being a big fan of suicidal but i've just never really gotten it you, yeah yeah but you're you're not a big fan of 80s la punk or 80s california punk it's just not i'm not a big fan of 80s metal either though yeah you yeah okay so then a lot of your music kind of starts in the 90s which is fine uh so that doesn't surprise my point is that doesn't surprise me that you're not a fan big fan of yeah of suicide like you're you're not a fan of a lot of bands from that sort of scene even yeah i'm really it. not yeah you're, that's a good point um uh, awesome dude mxpx next week man i'm actually kind of stoked for that I, I have a lot of like driving to do in the next few days and i'm gonna listen to it's the shit good. out of slowly going the way the buffalo bro. that's good driving music it is yeah good. dude plus you can always like to do your mxpx research you can always go acoustic to sort of get a feel for the right. songs. like there's a well, lot i've been of... watching i watched mike herrera talk to old buddy from the doors which was weird uh mm -hmm. i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna do some mike herrera listening i want to talk to that guy man and anybody that's that's still watching dude uh spoiler alert i'm gonna listen to the shit out of slowly going to bed at buffalo yeah and, uh, that and, record and, is fucking amazing but there's a couple of records that they have that i haven't even listened to but maybe once or twice so to like throw me a pick too if like you know he sees me in the pit you know bro that guy's rad uh i would love to talk to him you know there's a few people in punk that i think are different than me here mm. they have the love for the music but they're different for me in here and two people that have always stuck out to me as being a little different are mike herrera mm. and krista makes mm. they just seem like like where they entered punk wasn't where i entered punk honestly they they have yeah i'm not gonna say what i was gonna say because i don't want to come off rude because it wasn't meant to be rude um yeah i i I was really surprised when he was even talking to the guy from the doors. I was surprised he even knew any of their music. Uh, it doesn't seem like the kind of music that Mike Pereira would listen to. He seems like a more polished guy than that. Um, and Krista makes when we were doing That's that. not exactly true. Like, like, I, mean, I know a fair amount about the guy. It's pretty yeah. true. It's pretty accurate. Just as like him as a but person that, it, that he wouldn't know the doors though. I don't think that. No, no, no. It just, it doesn't strike me as the kind of band he would listen to a lot. You think that based on what you know about him, that you think that he's like, fuck, I love the dwarves. That's surprising. Yeah, but it wouldn't surprise me that he would be listening. That just wouldn't shock me. But oh, what shock, but it surprised me that yeah, anyways, whatever. I'm not gonna argue about that. That's fucking dumb. But <laughs> when we when we did that tour with Krista Makes, it blew my fucking mind the amount of stuff that he wasn't aware of, is my point. Like the stuff that I was like surprised. Like you and I both looked at each other 
Oh, I wasn't there with you on that one. No, we were, on that we were one, doing yeah. blue. We were listening to the guys that was talking in front of us. But Krista makes go back if you ever have the time and desire. Go watch the the walkthrough that I did with him. And I I corrected him on one thing. I had to because it was something that I was very passionate about. And I wasn't doing it in like a disrespectful way. I I, I love that guy. I love Dustin Jake. Um, but there's some stuff that he was unaware of or didn't understand or didn't know that I was like really just surprised. You'd think somebody that's been in the scene as long as he has and been around and played the shows and been with the bands he's been around that he would have the uh some 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 knowledge on some things he didn't have. And I, I don't know what, what this sounds like I'm saying right now. I'm just making an observation. It doesn't mean that they're good, bad, or right or wrong. It just means that I thought that they would have different knowledge than they did and different opinions than they did. And uh, I've been surprised by both of those gentlemen in the past couple of years, quite a bit. Anyways, Rob is like, fuck you. No, uh, it's, it's, well, it's, it's, it's just interesting, man. You know, I come from, I think it's because they come from like suburban punk and I don't, I, I didn't come from that life. I but here's, here's that. always my issue with this. And I don't want to get into a thing about it, but like, then also please reject fat Mike of no effects and please reject Pennywise and please reject bad religion. Please reject all those bands that also well, come from those exact same places. Well, I mean, I talked to Jim Lindbergh, so I can tell you that he didn't come from that fat Mike. I don't know, but fat Mike also has the knowledge that I'm talking about. So, I mean, sure. You know, I'm talking, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm talking about they, they didn't learn stuff simply because of where they came from. Some people took the time. I'm just to like, like learn. the MXPX just toured in the van for like 12 years before anyone gave two shits about. I just, I, anyway. I, sure. I, 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 I mean, you yeah. can tour in a van. In a van and no, but I just like, like, to be like, 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 they'd be, like, like, Mike would be un, like, what about punk does Mike not know? Like, I would love to know what about punk does is Mike like, what blind I mean, spots I, does I, does I didn't Mike say have? that he didn't know. Now, yeah, you're taking it way too personally. No, I'm not taking it personally. I'm just yeah, like, you are. You're no, I guess taking so, it but... very personally. Uh, and it wasn't. That's exactly what I was telling you. It wasn't. It was wasn't, wasn't <laughs> so, personal. So, congrats to me for misinterpreting your point. Okay. Very much so, sir. You get the prize <laughs> for today. Uh, no, it was just an observation. They just, they just, there were some things that specifically. It's Mike is more of his his attitude more so than his knowledge, and Chris was his knowledge more so than his attitude. And no, neither of them were enough to make me not like either band. Have I ever said that I didn't like those guys? No. No, I, I love those bands. It's just like the, I just you know it's like you have this idea to, to Mike or something. Well, it's like it's like you have this idea offensive. of a guy, right? Like you have an idea of like uh, it's one of those things where they say don't ever meet your heroes because they'll let you down. It, I wasn't let down per se, but that kind of I was like listening to to Chris talk and I was like, you didn't know that? I'm like, man, that's crazy. I thought you would have known that. And then it was like 20 minutes go by, and then he says something about something, and I go, that's not that's not accurate. And I'm like, damn, I'm kind of surprised you didn't know that. And it's just one of those things where I just assumed. I guess, uh, you know, was that was stupid in itself, assuming things, uh, that, that they would know stuff. And I don't know, where's Lesson Jake from? They're from Florida, right? Yeah. So I guess there's some stuff from, like, you know, Rockville. East Coast fucking, like, street punk shit that that guy isn't going to give a fuck about or know. And uh, uh, MXPX is from... Uh, the Pacific Northwest. Like Pacific Washington. Northwest. So, yeah, yeah I, guess, I guess the same could be said for him. But it was more, his stuff was more of a... Like, uh, I was just surprised by things that he said as far as his choices and why. And I was like, huh, interesting. But then it, it shouldn't surprise me. He seems like a pretty business savvy type of dude was my only real point. Uh, you know, shit, dude, if I could do what he's doing and make a living doing it, I absolutely would. It wasn't, uh, like a, what's the word? Yeah. And this all started by you saying he should come on your show. And somehow we got to this point. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't. I still don't think I was saying anything negative. I think you took it personally, but I wasn't saying anything negative. I was just he was different than I thought he would be. Is my point. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Fuck Fat Mike. That guy's a poser. Yeah, agreed. I mean, honestly. <laughs> oh shit, man. That's funny. All right, folks. We'll see y'all next week with some fucking <laughs> MXPX yeah. suburban suburban we're Christian gonna, punk. We're gonna uh, talk how much we we love next week. Dude, I genuinely love that band. I, I wouldn't know, talk I about that's, it. That's gonna be uh, great. <laughs> I'm terrible at making points sometimes, and yeah, you. I think you. I didn't realize you liked MXPX as much as you clearly do. I don't think I. I don't think I like them as much as I just came across as I do like. Yeah, them dude. Lot, I think I feel like I like them more than you do. I, you're the bigger fan I, of them. Yeah, I, I fucking agree. love MXPX. I, I don't Bro, know. What... So when Mike Herrera inevitably sees this now, because I fucking put my foot in my mouth. Yes. I love you, Mike. I love you. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and clip this as like you know, like old man hates, uh, you know, some, some kind of like ah, yeah, old man. That damn guy having, having business sense and not being a fucking moron with his time and money. 
old that, punk that, yells at cloud <laughs> bro dude for real ah, ow, ow. yeah dude when i when i want to make a point like that it always happens when i'm just it pops up in my head live and i don't have any like previous notes about it and so i'm just going off the cup it's never and, a good idea maybe i'm the prosecuting attorney like uh 100 explain yourself here yeah i'm like i'm trying to fuck i'm terrible at it i'm sorry hold me in contempt shut me up get me the fuck out of here <sighs> all right folks we'll see you next week on the punk rock review podcast mxpx talk i'm gonna slowly go the way of the fat guy see you later mm.